Single parents, high school romance, and a lot of sexual tension. Let's get into it. Spoiler warning. If you don't know, Wong Fu is just a bunch of film lovers who make shorts and sketches from time to time and watch way too many movies. How do we get a new work done? We're constantly breaking down and overanalyzing things we see, and we thought, why not share that with you guys? You'll get our reacts, our reviews, and our recs, and hopefully, we'll become better filmmakers in the process. So, it's Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, and Netflix just released a new batch of Asian-led content to keep us entertained for the entire month of May. And if you're stuck indoors with nothing else to do like us, then one afternoon, Netflix follows up the success of Two All the Boys, well, two to all the boys. Two to all the boys? Th there's two of them. With Never Have I Ever and The Half of It. As Two All the Boys is about an Asian American girl who loves to read, is raised by a single parent, and needs to keep a secret while crushing on the hottest kid in school. Never Have I Ever and The Half of It are about Asian American girls who love to read, are raised by single parents, and need to keep a secret while crushing on the hottest kid in school. There's a difference. Let's start here. Never Have I Ever is a series created by Mindy Kaling and is based on her childhood. The series follows Devi Vishakumar, a 15-year-old Indian girl whose life gets turned upside down after her father, Senhil Ramamurthy, or that guy from Heroes, or that guy from Flash, passes away and she mysteriously loses her ability to walk. After making a miraculous recovery, Devi sets out to change her social status by hooking up with Paxton Hall Yoshida, the love interest who has an ethnicity that the show really doesn't want us to forget. I'm part Japanese. Whoa, you are? I thought they were shit, didn't Whoa, Paxton speaks Japanese? What do you think Yoshida is, bro? Guess his last name makes more sense now. I'm sorry I didn't realize you were Asian, bro. I'll try to be more observant in the future. Everyone, does everyone know he's half Japanese? Debbie's mission creates some uncomfortable scenarios. I wouldn't want to pee in the middle of doing it. Yeah, that'd be bad. But they become even more uncomfortable when you find out the actor's actual age gap. Whoa! <laughs> I, I just think that's a fair exchange. If Hollywood's gonna give Asians less roles, then we get to play high schoolers until we're 40. Sure, the show takes a few liberties when portraying high schoolers, like when depicting their sex-crazed antics or their academic rivalries, but the show takes a lot of liberties in general. Like the fact that Davy's inner voice is narrated by tennis legend John McEnroe. Hey, I don't know what any of this means. Or that the school admin are super lax. Or that this guy qualifies as a high schooler. Yes, it's the second time I pointed this out. Whatever. It's exaggerated, it's silly, it's a style. And if you suspend a little disbelief, there's actually quite a lot to enjoy here. The true strengths of the show are in the subplots. Like the story of a mother struggling to raise her daughter while coping with the loss of her husband. The value of friendship as Fabiola embraces her sexuality and Eleanor wrestles with abandonment. And Davy struggle with her dual identity as Indian and American in an episode dedicated to exploring her family's heritage. Some old loser was telling me that I'm too Indian and some other people think I'm not Indian enough. It's all too relatable. Never have I ever seen a show quite like this. And that ain't the half of it. The half of it is written and directed by Alice Wu and is also based on her life experience. It's the story of Ellie Chu, a quiet Asian girl from a small town that the movie really doesn't want us to forget. Squahamish. 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 What was that? Squahamish. I didn't hear you. Squahamish. What did you say? Hell Quamish. She's a straight A student who found a side hustle selling English papers for extra cash, but still hasn't found a way to use email. Come on, Ellie. You're using Google Drive. And then one day she gets a special request from her polar opposite, a giant white hetero jock who's bad with words, Paul Munsky. He calls on Ellie to help him write a love letter to the prettiest girl in school, Aster Flores, a girl that Ellie also happens to have interest in. Awkward! That's gonna be a problem later. Strapped for cash, Ellie agrees to be Paul's ghostwriter, which sparks an unlikely friendship between the two. Through a series of letter exchanges, secret messages, and just the worst dates. People talk. Um, yeah, talk. Ugh. The three grow closer and end up learning more about themselves. Astra loves to paint, Ellie writes music, and Paul makes the most offensive fusion dish I've ever heard of. I'm calling it taco sausage. Do you want a bite? Oh, wow. Yeah, Paul, um, just make sure not to bring up taco sausages to your Latina crush, Astra Flores. Something tells me she's not gonna like that. 
The story tries to tackle a lot. Sexuality, racism, classism, religion. But at its core, it's a story about vulnerability and self-discovery, taking risks and branching out beyond the limits of your small town. Squamish is a jumping off point. All right, new drinking game. Take a shot every time they say Squamish. 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 That taco sausage sounds really good right about now. <laughs> to be honest, I was originally skeptical about this movie. The half of it, half Sierra Burgess with all that catfishing and half to all the boys with all the love letters, your cult and getting in hot tubs with your shirt on. It's hard to miss the similarities, but what sets this movie apart is that at its center is a dimensional queer female minority lead that we don't often get to see with a voice that we don't often hear. And a platonic friendship that matches the ranks of Han and Chewie, Mando Baby Yoda, Rocket and Groot, or Mike and Sully. Meaning, the secret to friendship is disproportionate heights. Also, this movie has the most chaotic church finale of all time. And that's including Kingsman. Everyone take your seat. That is some divine intervention. That being said, I recommend checking out Never Have I Ever and the half of it, and I rate them five extra sweet milk teas with a side of taco sausage. Interpret that as you may. Even if you can't get past the tropes and cliches, you've got to admit, Netflix has struck gold with these YAAA IPs. These stories are resonating with millions of young viewers across the globe while showcasing underrepresented experiences and faces that set an example for generations to come. And personally, I can't wait for more. Y you hear that, Netflix? I said more. More! I'm out of things to watch! Hey, I know it seems like I was poking a lot of fun at these two releases, but trust me when I say Wang Fu and I really enjoyed them. So comment below if you've seen it and let us know what you thought. Also, let us know what you think of this content and if you wanna see more of it. As always, be sure to check out our store. Right now we are selling a limited edition mug as a memento and a thank you for always Wong Fuing from home. Not only that, but it's the last chance to buy our movie, Everything Before Us, on Blu-ray. It's discounted and it's loaded with a bunch of features. So with that, we'll see you next time.